At the Japanese American National Museum, within its permanent collection, there are over 150,000 historical artifacts. And with each artifact, there is a personal story attached to them. One such object in its archive is Citizen USA, the only known draft of an unpublished work by Manzanar's Director of Adult Education, Charles K. Ferguson. The 22-page manuscript tells the story of a young girl named Jane Sato as she explores Manzanar. We meet her family, her father Albert, who is a teacher, her uncles, one who has joined the military to fight for American democracy, and another who now questions his faith in it. All along, Jane asks questions like why she and her family are being held at Manzanar, and what does it mean to be an American. But since the artifact's donation to Janum in 2002, the answer to the question of who the young girl in the photographs is has remained a mystery. Until last year, when collection staff researched and found Jane Sato, Citizen USA. One of the big questions for us was, is Jane Sato a fictional character? Was she based on a real person? So we started by looking in the Manzanar FAR records, the final accountability roster, to see if, if there were any Jane Sato's at Manzanar. And we found out there weren't, so that pretty quickly led to a dead end. Right, and the next place to try was the National Archives. Yes, the National Archives database of people coming into Manzanar. So we looked for Jane Sato and still no luck there. Right, so this kind of leads to our first clue that, you know, Jane Sato must have been a fictional character or it was a pseudonym. This meant that we needed to expand our search and after Jane Sato, the person and the name that appears most frequently in the manuscript is Jane's father. And in the book, his name is Albert, which isn't a common name, but unfortunately, Albert Sato wasn't listed in the National Archives or the final accountability roster at Manzanar. Yeah, so it's becoming clearer that all the names in the story are fictional, and we're opened up to the question of whether or not the entire Sato family has just had its name changed for the story, or if the family is just a complete work of fiction. You know, and in trying to answer this big question, Jamie, you picked up on a major clue in the story that really changed everything. Right. So on page nine of Citizen USA, the character of Jane Sato says her father won't be joining the army like her uncle because he has a family and then mentions that he is, present tense, a teacher being paid $19 a month. Yeah. So this is a new lead. We have Albert Sato. He's a teacher. We know the story takes place at Manzanar. So we had this new question to try and answer. Could there be any evidence of an Elbert or even a, a photograph of someone who looked like him somewhere in Janum's archive? Yeah, and the only way to find out is to start digging. So we pulled out a donated copy of the Manzanar yearbook and flipped to the teacher directory pages. And lo and behold, pictured in the yearbook is someone who looks a lot like Jane's father. And the caption shows that Albert Nagashima is a science teacher. Now, it's not exactly Albert, but Albert is pretty close, and maybe his name in the story was changed, or perhaps it's a typo in the yearbook. But with the photograph and a similar name, this really stands out and gives us a new family name, Nagashima, that we can work with. Yeah, so this is really exciting. We have a photographic match for Albert Sato, and now the name Albert Nagashima. So after coming back with no Satos in the National Archives and the FAR records, we can now go back to them with this new name, Nagashima. Right. So in the FAR records for Manzanar, we found the name Nagashima. But interestingly enough, it was attached to an Albert Nagashima. So we're back to the name Albert, and it must have just been a typo in the yearbook. But what's really important was not just that we found an Albert Nagashima from Los Angeles to match Albert Sato, but we found his wife, Mary, and most importantly, his daughter, Ruth, born in 1939, making her about the right age as the young girl in Citizen USA. Yeah, so this was a big breakthrough. The FAR records also told us that the Nagashimas left Manzanar for New York. So we have a new name, Ruth, a birth year, and a location, New York. 
you know, three distinct pieces of information that can really improve a search. Right. So using Google, I got a search result for a New York high school alumni magazine with a sort of where are they now type of post, which mentioned Ruth. And it gave us more recent information, including her married name, which allowed us to update our search and find contact information for people related to Ruth. Yeah, we've gone from Jane Sato to Ruth Nagashima and now have her present day name and potentially a way to contact her. And all of this is connected together by Citizen USA, uh, the Manzanar yearbook, and the final accountability roster. It's a lot of archival connections and, and research, you know, some good old fashioned clues and some reasonable hunches. Right. So Charles Ferguson wrote Citizen USA sometime during 1942, 1943, but he held on to it until his passing when his wife donated it to Janum in 2002. And for that entire time, there was a bit of mystery about it. And now with a little digging, we actually got a hold of Ruth's son, who was happy to put us in touch with his mother. You know, when we finally did get to speak with Ruth, it was really exciting. But, you know, I was really nervous as well. For the longest time, she was just Citizen USA, and now I was actually going to speak with her on the phone. And of course, you know, she has no idea about Citizen USA or Charles Ferguson, but what was great was as I started to describe the pictures that are in Citizen USA, she stops me and tells me that she knows exactly what images I'm talking about. She then sends me this PowerPoint that she's made and that she's been using as she travels around to schools and libraries, speaking to kids and adults uh, about incarceration, about Manzanar, and about her life. And in the PowerPoint, she uses these exact same images. She lets me know that when her family left camp and resettled in New York, a friend of her father who was still at Manzanar sent the Nagashimas the photos. So she had just grown up with these images as her childhood photos. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing to discover that someone across the country has photos related to objects that we have or the other half of a story that we never knew. And we were really lucky in this case. I mean, we had this artifact, unanswered questions surrounding it, and with a bit of sleuthing and research, we were able to solve the mystery and connect with Ruth. You know, it's really incredible to think that these photographs are taken at Manzanar, and one set stays with Ferguson and becomes his Citizen USA manuscript. And then when he leaves, those photos return to Los Angeles and eventually end up at Janum in 2002. And another set, about the same time Citizen USA is being written, are traveling across the U.S. to New York, where they basically resettle along with the Nagashimas. Yeah, and there are countless stories related to objects that only emerge when someone asks the right questions and takes the time to make a connection with donors and family members, and they get their story and make sure it's included in the historical record. It's really the best part of our job, being able to do this kind of research and follow these new leads and, and speak with individuals who, whose lives intersect with these artifacts. It's incredible when you make these discoveries that give life to the objects in our collection. As an archivist and a historian in researching Citizen USA and finding Ruth, it's tough to know that some details are lost to history, but I'm also thankful that we can find this information years later. I'm excited to know that there's more to be discovered and what can and will be saved for future generations. Mm -hmm.